This is an art class by Splash, a free youth arts workshop. In this video, we show you how to create a landscape painting in oils. This, this is part two. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? I hope you are having a great day so far. I'm Charlie Newton and I'm your art teacher for today. This is Splash Live Art Class. So today we're going to continue with our landscape painting. This is our third installment. We may have one more if we don't finish today. And, and uh, so get your paints out, kids, and uh, get your solvents, and uh, we can continue. So this scene is from my backyard. And um, I actually took a photograph. So you can work from photographs that you take or you can find photographs in magazines and change them, mix them up and uh, use that for your painting. So I'm searching for my photograph so I'll have something to go by. Now remember we don't, uh, we are not, not slaves to the photograph. We just use this photograph as a reference. So we follow the photograph as far as we can and then we can add things. But remember you are not a, you are not a camera, you are you are an artist, so you can add things. And I'm always seeing new things that I want to add. So I'm going to put on some gloves. You might want to put on some gloves. You, they also make a um, liquid gl glove. It's sort of like, it looks like lotion. And um, you can find that at the hardware store. And, and you just put that on your hands and uh, it works just like a glove. If you, you might be allergic to plastic or vinyl. You can use the liquid glove. Maybe next time, if I remember, I'll bring some and show you. So I'm testing my paints to see if they are, you know, dried, like this yellow has dried. So I just, it, you, you notice that the paint forms a, what we call a skin. And so it's dry on the outside, sort of like plastic, but on the inside there's wet paint. And that's what's happening with this painting. Um, if I put the paint on thick, which I'm going to do today, I'm going to really put the paint on thick. I'm not going to use any uh, painting medium unless I need to clean paint off of my brush today. So my painting is pretty tacky. Now this is only a demonstration model, but if it wasn't, I would take a little sandpaper and sand some of this lightly. So today I'm going to focus on the greens. So I'm using the permanent green light. I'm going to lay them on the table. And I'm using uh, sap green. And I'm going to be, to be mixing the sap green with burnt umber. just like we did last time. So I'm going to paint the lights and darks.
I think I'm going to start with the sap green. And whenever I want to go darker, I'm going to mix some, some burnt ombre. I think I'll use my uh, bright brush. And I'm going to be making leaves. I'll give a demonstration. Like that. See? So this uh, tree have leaves leaf that uh, form sort of like that. Now I'm just, right now I'm, I'm only using my um, sap green. I'm going to start there. And that's sort of going to be the middle ground. And I'm painting leaves. Each brush stroke represents one leaf. So I'm painting the leaves and the limbs at the same time. I'm using the edge of the brush, this part here, not the flat part, because I want some thin lines. So each stroke represents a leaf. This is sort of a, the darkest, probably the darkest tone that's going to be on here. Now, you don't, you could have, I could have done this. I could have started with my um, permanent green light, but um, my instincts told me not to. And that's just from painting for years and years. You know, my way of doing it, my, I've noticed how slow the paint dries. So, if anything, I'll go, um, I'll come back in with the permanent green light to enhance the color of the leaves, if you will. See those stroke, Just some strokes. I'm going to uh, demonstrate, because I know you probably can't see can't tell what I'm doing. I'm going to get this little canvas here. So I'll make a stroke like this. And this is how the master, I learned this from the master impressionist. Use as few strokes as possible to make the statement. So say I'll make a stroke. That might be, it could be a limb. Then I'm pressing down hard to get the wide part of the leaf, and then I'm lifting up to the point to get the point part of the leaf. See? See like that? See? Get that leaf shape. But these leaves are a little longer on this uh, black walnut tree. You see that? Now I'm going to have to do something with this canvas. I might paint some more leaves on it. So that's how I'm painting the leaf. The leaves on the tree. And every time I make that mark, that type of mark, it don't have to be perfect, but the mind is going, going to see a leaf every time I make that, these marks. So I'm doing the same marks I just showed to you. But now I'm doing them faster. It's the same marks. Pressing down and lifting up, catching the end the, of the brush, the, the corner of the brush as I lift up. That's something you could practice. I'm going to get some brown here, which I want to put some, a few limbs. So I'm using the edge of my brush for these limbs. Now it's much easier to do today because. The paint underneath is pretty dry. I can put some more limbs in. It's difficult when the paint is wet to do this. So the more limbs, the more realistic it's going to appear to be. Then I'm going to dip my brush into the green, sap green, and, and, and mix that with brown. And I'm going to get a dark reddish 
green. So it looks black. It's going to look black to you. But just a green line, a green limb works too. When painting, you'll find out that certain colors have certain consistencies. So some paints are thinner than others. Red oil paint, I'm telling you, I always get red over it everything on everything when I paint with red so don't use red uh, until last red is a complementary color to all this green so red it, when I add uh, some red anywhere it's going to make the painting pop a little bit and that's that's what I want to happen See, I can go back over what I did last time, too. I'm putting paint on thick today. Remember to use scumbling for the grass. What I'm doing is I'm darkening these shadows. I only have a little sap green on my brush, so I allow the uh, the brighter green, which is the permanent green light, to to shine through. I'm going back here, making this up here more solid, and then I'm going to paint some more leaves. You notice I'm painting all over the painting. I don't just uh, hesitate in one area of the painting. Now your paint set has more greens than the ones I'm using and if you want to use a different green uh, feel free to do it. Do that. I like to sort of limit myself to make me pull more out of my colors and then only if what I've done is not sufficient I'll go back and and see if I have some paint that would um, and uh, colors that would enhance the painting more <coughs> I've been very careful with the leaves on the on the bush because I want them to be lighter so that the foliage in the background will, you know, recede back into the background. So I'm looking behind this rose bush, or not, I mean, what did we say this was? A, uh, it's not a rose bush, it's a uh, rose of Sharon, yes. Now, It's good to sort of plan the painting, but we, what we did not do, which is a traditional way of doing things, is uh, we, we could have done a color study of this painting first, but I rarely do that. 
right now, I'm more concerned with you experimenting. But later on, if you stay in splash class, and when the pandemic is over, God willing, uh, in class we can do color studies. But for now, this is just an hour uh, class. We don't have time to do the color studies. And the color studies are for your own personal preferences. Right now you're just following me, but when you paint on your own, you know, you, 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 you do it your way. So these are just examples on ways to approach a painting. This is not the only way. Everybody paints differently. These branches are sort of, I'm using them as a reference. I mean, the branches that I painted in here, they are a reference to help me make decisions about the directions that I'm going to have my, my leaves going in. They, they need to go in all directions. And you just keep painting until it looks the way you want it to. So I'm painting in different directions. Sometimes the leaves are going this way, sometimes they're overlapping. So I'm painting over leaves too. Remember to overlap. We're not coloring like in a coloring book. You're painting. So that's and with oil paints, you have to be patient to let the paints dry. So things I want you to remember with oil painting. Number one, I may I may not get them in the sequence that you see them, but do not use black. Don't use black at all. Don't even open the black tube. Black is a crutch. Number two, use red last. And see. Number three, paint in layers. Did I have three or four? Yeah. You need patience. You need to do work today. And, and when you can't work no more without messing it up because the paint is too wet, let it dry. When, you, when you're overlapping, the, the, the uh, painting underneath don't need to be bone dry. It needs to be tacky dry. If it's sort of bone dry, then you need to, to lightly sand that surface off. If you check your palette, you'll see what I mean by, uh, well, bone dry. It, the the uh, medium in the paint, the linseed oil, the solvents, it will dry, they will dry first. And they form a, a skin a type of skin on the paint. And when you paint over that, there will be air pockets underneath and your paint, your painting is, is going to crack. This painting down here will probably end up cracking because uh, I'm, I'm not taking the time uh, to, um, to sand it. Some parts are tacky and some are not. Like, for the artist, you know when you're going to go into your studio. You know when you need to go in the studio. You need to check. You know, sometimes I'll go and check and see if the paint is dry enough for me to paint. And I try to check it. And uh, when it gets tacky, now it's time for me to start working. If I can't work that day, 
for some reason. I'm too busy. I'm doing something else. Or it's going to take too long to do whatever I want to do that day on the painting. I'll wait till the next day. And if I can get in and start painting, I will. But if it has dried too much, what I'll do is I'll sand that film. That it's like a it feels it's like a plastic film. I'll sand it so that the paint I'm uh, the layer that I'm painting today will stick to the paint that's underneath. You can also, if you're painting and you don't have the patience or the time to wait till the paint dry, they, they have a thing called Japan Dryer, which can speed up drying time. I used to use Japan Dryer a lot in the, in the 70s. I don't use it no more. I prefer the natural drying time. Now, some paints will come out of the tube perfect. These are student grade paints, so they don't always come out of the tube perfect. But they will still look good. If you are in college or they, they are affordable, sort of affordable for the college student. No paints are affordable. No oil paints are actually affordable worth buying, but uh, they're kind of expensive. But uh, you really have to learn about controlling the medium when you're using student grade paints. You notice how I'm leaving some of the yellow to work, hopefully will work as highlights. I'm going to go back in too uh, with a smaller brush probably. So I like to use the, the word, I'm setting the painting up for the coup de gras. That's what I call it, the coup de gras, the master stroke, the thing that's going to make the painting stand out. Now I'm thinking about, now I'm, a lot of things I'm talking about, it's not going to make sense to you for a while. But I'm thinking that this bush is not flat, it's three-dimensional, and I'm painting the the other side of the bush now. So my brush strokes, my leaves are a little smaller. Then I'm going to go on top of this with um, a brighter color, hopefully. And I hope it works because what, what I could do is just wait, let the paint dry some more, and do this the next day, tomorrow. I mean Saturday when we have our next class. But I don't think I want to. You know, I, I didn't even look at the time. Are you keeping up with the time? Uh, yeah. Let me know when I have 30 minutes, please. <laughs> I think maybe in 10 minutes, I've got five or 10 minutes, I should have to, I don't know. Don't include the countdown. Hmm. So 30 minutes have gone. Oh, okay, good. Uh, kids, you remember Iantha, my wife? <laughs> she is on the camera. She's acting. Oh, okay. Behind the camera and the, uh, okay, my bad. And she's the producer. Uh oh. Because of COVID, I shouldn't have said nothing to her. Because of COVID, she had to gain some new skills. <laughs> Now, your painting is not going to look exactly like mine, nor should it. It should look like your art, your, your, you know, it's your painting, not mine. So don't worry about it if it don't look exactly like mine. Mm -hmm. 
you may use. Feel free to go wild with the colors. Feel free to do that. Like in class, I love to tell kids, no, just, I'm just showing you the basics, but go crazy with the colors, you know. It could be more abstract, but I just want to know that you know how to use the material. That's the main thing. But whatever's going to help you express yourself, do that. I mean, I wouldn't paint a, my painting wouldn't be this mundane. I would probably use wilder colors. But I want to show you the basics. All paints, you have to lay down on the canvas. You lay it down, apply it. It's paint application. Think in those terms. We've been using watercolors, and watercolors, you sort of massage the watercolors in. You don't rub it. You massage it. You allow, you allow the paint to flow out of your brush with the watercolors. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. I just want to get some of this background darker. I could use a smaller brush to do this. Well, I'll use a smaller brush so that you can see what I'm doing. So now that I have a lot of leaves up here, this is this, this is what I want. I want it to look dense like in real life. Going for that density. I still haven't painted the front of this bush because I want this bush to come forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to get a I think I'll get the round brush, the large round brush. I'm not going to put any paint on it. I just want to kind of blend some of this paint into the yellow background a little bit. I'm being very careful. If I get too much paint on my brush, I just wipe it off. I just want to blend a little bit so that the yellow, some of the yellow, I don't want to be so bright. I can have bits of bright yellow. But I'm using my eyes to, you know, however it feels. Make sure you have the sky sh showing through though. I don't want just yellow paint that don't relate to anything back here either. Just, that's just yellow paint there. You know, I want to say, well, that's a, a highlight for something, a leaf or something back there. So just barely touching it. Same thing with here. Your strokes matter. My strokes are going from top to bottom. I want that to look like a bush. So I'm ton toning down this yellow. Sometimes you got to tone things down. Now I may go back with some yellow in, in a couple of minutes to bring some of the yellow back on top. Just barely touching the canvas with, with this. I put no paint on the brush. I just want this painting to feel sort of like a landscape, visually. Art is a visual language, where painting is. Some artists, the language of movement, some is tactile. We touch the painting with our eyes, well, sculptor would touch his art with his hands. Okay, I'm just filling in. When you're patient, you can fill in. There's no rush. You, you won't necessarily paint as fast as, as I'm painting. I'm doing this fast. You don't have to do it fast. You can always replay 
these videos, you can stop it, you know, rewind, freeze it, do whatever it takes. To me, oil painting is the toughest medium, and that's why I wanted some of my kids to finally experiment with. I've been waiting for years for that this to happen. I don't know. I didn't like when I was growing up doing art. It took me a long time to learn how to paint and draw when I was a kid. I didn't have any teachers. And I, I didn't get discouraged just because I couldn't do something. I I wanted to learn how to do it. I was trying to figure out how to do it. I didn't have time to feel discouraged. Now I'm I'm going to use this brighter color here, this bright green, this permanent green light. Every now and then I might dip my brush back in here to tone this down some. But the wet paint should tone it down automatically. So I'll be painting wet on wet. So what I'm going to do now is I am actually stirring, stirring the paint up. I want it to be thicker. I wish it was thicker than this. So I'm going to stir it up. Now I'm going to try to just lay the paint down. I'm not going to press on the canvas because I want it to, I want the color to stand up. So still using the idea of the leaf. Matter of fact, I probably should use the other brush because the, the other brush works better. Yes, I wish this, this permanent green light was, was thicker. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to wipe the sap green off the brush. Now, some of you would say, hey, you can just stop there. But I, we need some highlights. This is definitely not thick enough. So what I'm going to do, it's too thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can mix it with some thick paint, this yellow here. I, I, I'm using two yellows. I'm using the uh, cadmium yellow hue, cadmium yellow pale hue. This light yellow is lemon. And this is pretty thick here. This is paint from the other day. I'm going to mix it with this permanent and see if that can thicken the paint up some. I'm sure it did, so. Not a lot. <laughs> so this is why we let the paint dry. If I can't get it to the consistency that I want it to, uh, we'll come back another day. Now, see the yellow works. I'm going to go back with this cadmium yellow, paint a few leaves. Just a few up in here. I'm going to get my round brush again. So now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make myself stick 
to, you know, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna use this uh, permanent green light. So I'm trying to solve a problem now. The problem is that the permanent green light is not thick enough. And there are solvents, mediums that you can use to make it thick. Earlier, we used this uh, ultramarine blue. I'm gonna just lay it down on the palette because I might mix my own green. And uh, make sure I have, a, yeah, I do have enough of this permanent yellow, but I'm gonna put a little more on the canvas. So I have the, cad the cadmium yellow pale, permanent green, ultramarine blue. I know if I mix cadmium yellow with ultramarine blue, what happens? Somebody tell me. I'm gonna get a green. The more yellow I mix, the lighter green I'm gonna get. Now I'm gonna take some of this permanent green, mix that in. All of a sudden, this paint seems to be thick. <laughs> I just need some leaves that you can see that's coming forward a little lighter than these up here. Now I'll be going to the uh, permanent green back and forth the, the mix the thing I mixed up and the permanent green I'll be going back and forth I'm just barely touching the canvas barely that's why I'm doing it quick I'm just sort of laying it down because I want this this permanent green I really want that color in there and I think I can do this today Yeah, it's happening. I'm just trying to just barely lay it down. I don't want to sm press. I don't want to put any pressure on this. I just want it to sit. I want this green to sit on top of the other colors, the other paints. That's what we mean by layering. I'm painting layers. And I'm still thinking leaf, leaves. Look at my brush. Load your brush up with paint. I'm dabbing or scumbling. So this um, uh, permanent green uh, is very transparent. We're going to uh, scumble some of this permanent green just Plain old permanent green, permanent green on the grass, in the grass. And I'm thinking grass. In my mind, I'm thinking grass. It's important to control your thinking. That's why we say, if you think you can't do something, then you can't. If you think you can do something, then you will.
You say, I can't do it. I say, you can't do it yet. <laughs> Just keep coming to class. <laughs> I don't know anything worth doing that you can do it, that you can do the first time you try. I don't know anything like that. Are you sure? No. We had 30 minutes, not 15. Anyway, I'm not done yet. <laughs> We're going to finish this today. So if I go over, will you guys forgive me if I go over a few minutes? Thirteen minutes left? Okay. Well, I'll be able to finish it on time probably. We probably won't go over, so. Now I'm getting the, uh, the effect I want. You have to keep working at it. You, you are the god of this painting. <laughs> this painting has to do what you tell it to. You are in control. You decide. You have the final decision of what it looks like. If you make a mess or blob, you can always paint it wet. You can take a rag and wipe it up. So you see how I'm just, I just keep doing the same marks over and, and over again. And the more marks you have, the more it begins to sort of fill in and resemble leaves. I want to feel some of this color, feel some of this color up in the trees too, some of this permanent green. So just in different areas where I feel we need to feel the color of the green so that the trees is not so, you know, flat. I don't want the trees to go flat. Just in different places, you decide where. Just to show that some light is hitting the leaves. Well, I'm going to stand up. <coughs> I'm going to, I want you to stand up, <coughs> and go back 10 paces, and take a look. Sometimes you're too close to see. Now, while you're looking, make decisions and I just did I know I need to fill in and try not to forget the decisions you just made <laughs> it's a visual language 
so it's easy to forget. I want to fill in this area here. This is like a little circle or curve I want to fill in here. We're giving, by using this permanent green in the background, we're giving this tree some dimension. Basically, like, look what happens when I, I overlap the, the uh, trunk of the tree. We're trying to give this painting some dimension. Isn't this fun? Okay, I don't want to lose track of time. You're landing on like globs. Trying to give it some dimension so it's not so flat. And then what I'm going to do It's basically finished, but I'm going to add the coup de gras if I can. I hope it works. Well, first, I'm going to see if I can paint sunlight hitting the ground. So I'm going to get the cat yellow. And where do I want that sunlight? Here. I'm going to get a little white and go back on this, go back in this too. Let some sunlight hit here. I'm going to get some white and go back on top of that. This part here too. Right now I'm using yellow. Just want to show some light. Now, put this brush down. Get a smaller brush. Get a small round. Get some white paint. All about tints and shades, lights and darks. Add a little blue to this. This, this dark color is, is ultramarine blue. Now what I have to make sure I don't do is get carried away. Because <laughs> I want to paint these rocks and you know. But I'm not going to get carried away. I'm telling myself do not get carried away. Because you you want to finish today. I'm setting it up, but I'm not going to finish until I feel like everything is just right. I'm going to finish with the flowers. I'm going to feel like everything is set up just right. I'm going to take a couple of minutes. I'm using this blue to paint some of the branches that I want to be very dark in. Ultramarine blue, not black. It looks black. <laughs> but it's not. There's a whole nother dimension to this painting. I'm going to start with the ultramarine blue because I'm putting a little up here, but then I'm going to stop because, like I say, I would be trying to take this painting to the next level and there's no need to do that.
but I'm thinking lights and darks. Now I'm going to go back again with my yellow, cadmium yellow. I'm going to mix it with the, I'm mixing the cad yellow with the, um, the green, the um, permanent green light. Look what happens. Bring a little bit more dimension. I'm gonna get some white and mix that with this with this mixture. Get the white, mix that in there. Permanent green light, white. That's a little blue in there too. Just a little bit too light. It's, it's not too light but I don't want to, I don't need to go there. <laughs> now I look green on my palette, so I want it to be more like this, more gr light green. That makes that pop. Just give it some dimension. See this light green? Okay, now, I know it's about time to stop. So, do a little bit more and then I am gonna stop. Okay, that's good enough for the coup de gras. So I have white, now I'm going to get some red from my uh, paints. I'm not sure if I want to use crimson, uh, why not? Well, let's just use crimson. I think it'll make a nice pink. I'm trying to get a beautiful pink. I'm wiping the green off of my brush. I'm just going to paint in the shapes. I'm going to uh, oh the flowers. First, let's mix the paint, crimson with the white. So that's a medium crimson, light crimson. So I'm going to be using these three colors. Whatever works the best. I could have used the purple, but I think I wanted to use the crimson. So, you know what a flower looks like. I'm just painting petals. Oops. That was clumsy. It don't have to be perfect. Sometimes you see the side of the flower like that. So sometimes it's gonna be small. Sometimes it's going to be large. Scumbling. I'm using the scumbling technique. Splash kids, you know what scumbling is. We did that with the acrylic paints. Now, I suggest you wait, watch what I'm doing, but wait a day or two before you do this, this part. Wait till the paint is a little bit more dry. It'll, it'll, it'll be easier. Because you have to barely touch the picture. But if you touch it right, it'll work. I'm going to get the darker crimson to add a little dimension 
or color variation. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to get, I'm going to use pure white for the center of some of these. Also, some places you can put dark crimson and the, you can see the flower from the other side or a flower that's in, in shade. Don't just stick to the picture. The picture is only a reference. I keep saying that because uh, you want your painting to look better than the picture. You want, I want my painting to give you more than a photograph. I want it to give you my particular way of seeing. I want to give you my art. Okay. Okay. I think that's probably enough. Now I got to stand back one more time. I know it's time to go, isn't it, Ianthe? But I know it's time to go. I just want to stand back to see what I'm doing. Sometimes you you have to get back because you can't see. You have to see the whole the thing as a whole. Yeah, that's. I'm going to use white. I'm going to put something right up here. I'm always thinking about balance. I think, you know, some of us, we have, each of us, there's some things that you can do now better than me. And, that's, and it's because you have a particular skill that, that you was born with or, or a way of, of seeing and, or doing things. If you have a brush smaller than this, use that brush. But in the center of these little flowers, not all of them, just put white. Just barely touch the edge of the brush, just a little white. Some of the, some of the flowers are turned uh, sideways so you wouldn't see the center. Just, just the tip of your brush, barely touch a little white. Okay. Isn't this fun? I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy painting. Now, what do you do? What's the last thing you do? I am the. What's the last thing you do? Yes. Sign it. I'm signing my name, and kids, don't just put your name, put your age on it. And I want you to, I want the lower left hand or lower right hand corner, okay? And there you have it. Landscape and oils. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I have, and join us again on Saturday morning, and we'll be doing something else, something different. I may just take you into my studio so that you can see what I'm doing. And I may explain it a little bit to you, but then I'm going to paint, and I'm, I'm not going to say anything so that you can see how I work. I've enjoyed this. I hope you have a good evening. And remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye.